Hi dears, today we can discuss the topic the boundary conditions regarding the reflection and transmission of waves. The propagation of a wave mainly depends on the boundary conditions through which the wave is traveling. To explain this theory, we can consider a wave propagation through two streams in which the one end of a string is tied to the other. In this case, the tension at the both string are strain. But the string 1 and string 2 are different. So, if M is representing the mass per unit length, M is representing the mass per unit length, the velocity through which the wave is traveling along string 1 and string 2 will be different. Simply we know V is equal to root of T by M from the previous topic. Here the velocity from the string 1 will be V1 and from string 2 will be V2. And also we know and the, this is the string 1 and string 2. This is the knot through which these two strings are connected. And these both strings are tied with the same tension. And we know the mass in the string 1 is M1 and the wave number is K1 and velocity is V1 and similarly in the second string is uh, correspondingly M2, K2 and V2. And it is tied at a node X equal to 0 position. And this is the boundary. Now let us consider a wave is incident at the node or boundary. That is a wave which is travelling in this direction is considered as the incident wave in its complex notation. That is we are representing it as F I I to represent the incident wave. So I am writing this as F I of X T is equal to A I B e raised to I into K1 X minus omega T. Where it is travelling through the stream 1. Here the wave number is K1. So here K1. And it is travelling in a positive x direction. That is why K1 x minus omega t. And AI represents the complex amplitude of incident wave. Then when the incident wave reaches this knot or the boundary between string 1 and 2. A portion of this wave is reflected back along the negative x direction across string 1. And the remaining part is transmitted in the positive x direction along string 2. Then this wave is representing the reflected wave FR and this wave is representing the transmitted wave FT where FR is travelling in the negative x direction with the velocity V1 and FT is travelling in the positive x direction with the velocity V2 along string 1 and string 2 respectively. Now we can go through the expressions for the reflected wave and transmitted wave. For the reflected wave we are using the notation F for Xt. This can be written as the complex amplitude for the reflected wave AR E raised to I into K1 X minus omega D and it is travelling in negative direction that is minus of K1 X minus omega D. As it is travelling in a negative x direction, here implies a negative x sign. Now we can write the transmitted wave representation Ft of xt as the amplitude to represent the transmitted wave Ft e raised to i into as the wave is travelling along the second string, its wave number will be k2 that is k2 s minus omega 2. And also we know the reflected wave is if y of x t is equal to a i e raised to i into k1 x minus omega. When we go through the directions and the components k1, k1, etc. in the figure that I have already explained, you will clear these three complex representation which represent that incident wave, reflected wave and transmitted. Now we can discuss some of terms which will be useful to derive these boundary conditions. We know the wavelength lambda is equal to 2 pi by k. And also lambda 1 and k1 represent the wavelength length 
wave number of pin string 1 and corresponding lambda 2 and k2. When we find out the ratio of wavelengths, lambda 1 by lambda 2 will be equal to 2 pi by k1 divided by 2 pi by k2 which is equal to k2 by k1 and we get as equation number 1. And also we know all parts of the system is oscillating with the same frequency omega. Then the frequency at the boundary omega will be a constant. So we can write omega is equal to kv is equal to a constant which implies k1 v1 will be equal to k2 v2. From this we can write v1 by v2 is equal to k2 by k1. We got another relation and it is named as 2. Now by comparing equation 1 and 2 we can write lambda 1 by lambda 2 is equal to v1 by v2 is equal to k2 by k1 and name it as equation number 3 which, which will be useful in the further derivation. For a sinusoidal wave traveling along a string, the net disturbance of that string can be obtained using the principle of superposition of waves. So, the resultant wave along the string wave will be x of x t which is the sum of f y and f r. That is f of x t can be written as a i e raised to i into k1 x minus omega t plus a r e raised to i into minus k1 x minus omega t. And similarly we can write the net disturbance in our string 2 or the resultant wave in our string 2 as f prime x t is equal to f t. That is f prime x t is equal to a t e raised to i into k2 x minus omega t. Here remember a i, a r and a t represent the complex amplitudes of incident, reflected and transmitted waves respectively. We can name these equations as equation number 4 and equation number 5. We know the sinusoidal wave is a continuous function. So, it will not be having any break at this node and will be continuous when it travelling from string 1 to string 2. To explain that, we are considering two nearby points 0 minus and 0 plus where the differences are almost 0. The corresponding wave function f of 0 minus t and f of 0 plus t. According to the continuity function of wave equation, we can write f of 0 minus t is equal to f of 0 plus t. From this, I am going to write it as f of x t at x equal to 0 will be same as that of f prime x t at x equal to 0, which is the boundary condition to explain equation number 6. Now, consider the case where the node is considered having negligible mass, then the force also will be negligible. In such a case, the derivative of the force can be derivative of the f also will be continuous at the node. That is, dou by dou x of f of x t at x equal to 0 will be equal to dou by dou x of f prime x t at x equal to 0 and this given as equation number 7. And we are deriving the boundary conditions using these two equations. And also there is another case, if the knot is having a particular mass which is not negligible, then there will be a force, then the wave will, be, will not be continuous at the boundary and it will be remaining like this. So, using this first boundary condition, f of x at x equal to 0, equal to f prime x at x equal to 0, we can rewrite f phi plus f r at x equal to 0 will be equal to f t at x equal to 0. And substituting from equation 4 and 5, we can write a i e raised to i into k1 x minus omega t plus a r e raised to i into k1 x minus omega t at x equal to 0 is equal to a t e raised to i into k2 x minus omega t at x equal to 0. Then substitute x equal to 0, a i e raised to minus i omega t plus a r e raised to minus i omega t plus a t e raised to minus i omega t. But e raised to i omega t is common in both sides. So we can rewrite it as a i plus a r is equal to a t and give it as equation number 8. 
Now, using the second boundary condition 7, no by dou x, uh, f5 plus f4 at x equal to 0 equal to dou by dou x f t at x equal to 0. By substituting for f5, f4 and f t. Now, we can apply x equal to 0 only after differentiating these terms with respect to x. So, differentiating i into k1 into ai e raised to i k1 x minus omega t minus i into k1 ar e raised to i into minus k1 x minus omega t at x equal to 0 is equal to i k2 into at e raised to i k2 x minus omega t at x equal to 0. Now we can substitute x equal to 0 in this equation. That is k1 ai e raised to minus i omega t and this will be 0. Similarly, minus k1 ar e raised to minus i omega t is equal to k2 at e raised to minus i omega t and also the i is common on LHS and RHS so we are not like that. e raised to minus i omega t is also common on LHS and RHS so we, we can rewrite this as k1 ai minus k1 ar is equal to k2 at and consider this as equation number 9. Substituting 8 in 9, we can rewrite k1 ai minus k1 ar is equal to k2 into ai plus ar. We are using k1 ai minus k1 ar is equal to k2 ai plus k2 ar. Now I am going to take this term into LHS and k1 ar into RHS. Then we get k1 minus k2 into ai is equal to k1 plus k2 into ar. That is ar can be written as k1 minus k2 by k1 plus k2 into ai which is the expression for the complex amplitude of reflected wave in terms of incident complex amplitude. That is equation number 10. Now we can multiply the equation number 8 which is the ai plus ar is equal to at with k1. That is k1 ai plus k2 k1 ar is equal to k1 at. Now by adding this equation with the equation number 9, that is this equation. K1 a plus K1 a r plus K1 a i minus K1 a r is equal to K2 a t plus K1 a t. Then these two terms are vanishing and the remaining is K1 a i plus K1 a i a i that is 2 K1 a i is equal to K1 plus K2 into a t which can be written as at is equal to 2k1 by k1 plus k2 ai. Equation number 12. Presenting that as ar is equal to k1 minus k2 by k1 plus k2 into ai and at is equal to 2k1 by k1 plus k2 into ai. Now I am going to replace this equation in terms of velocity as we have k1 by k2 is equal to v2 by v1. We have already discussed. That is ar is equal to v2 minus v1 by v1 plus v2 into ai. This is the expression for reflected um, complex amplitude and the transmitted complex amplitude to v2 by v1 plus v2 into ai. Both are in terms of incident complex amplitude. So, in terms of real amplitudes, that is AR into E raised to I delta R is equal to V2 minus V1 by V1 plus V2 into AI E raised to I delta I and AT E raised to I delta T is equal to 2V2 by V1 plus V2 AI E raised to I delta I where delta I, delta R and delta T represent the phase constant during Incident wave, reflected wave and transmitted wave. This set of equations are denoted as equations A and these are equation B. We got the expressions for reflected and complex reflected amplitude and complex transmitted amplitude in terms of complex incident amplitude. Now we can derive the relation with the real 
amplitude that is A R A I N A T. Consider the special case one in which the second string is lighter. That is M2 is less than 1 which implies B2 is greater than 1. When we consider across these equations, we get B2 is greater than 1. So this is positive and this is also will be positive. So we can say A, 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 T are in same place which implies delta I is equal to delta R is equal to delta T. So we can rewrite this set of equations as A R is equal to V2 minus V1 by V1 plus V2 into A I and A T is equal to 2 V2 by V1 plus V2 into A I. This is the first special case which gives the relation between A R, A I and A T. Second case, when the second string is area, that is M2 is greater than M1, which gives V1 is greater than V2. In this equation, if V1 is greater than V2, it will be negative. That is, the reflected wave is 180 degree out of phase with respect to incident wave. And also, the transmitted wave is positive on the RHS and so the transmitted wave is in phase with the incident wave. So, you can rewrite A R is equal to minus of V2 minus V1 by V1 plus V2 AI where this negative sign implies the out of phase component. That is equal to V1 minus V2 by V1 plus V2 into A R. And also, A T is equal to 2 V2 by V1 plus V2 AI. This is the second case where the second string is area and these are the equations where the second string is lighter. These four equations together give the relation between the real amplitudes of incident, reflected and transmitted waves. When delta R is equal to delta I, AI will be equal to minus of AR. That is, the total incident wave is reflected back. Also, when we consider V2 is equal to 0, the RHS is 0, which also states that AT is equal to 0. That is, there will be no transmitted wave. That is, when the second string is infinitely massive, the total wave incident on the not will be reflected back and there will be no transmitted wave component. Thank you. So, today we have studied the boundary conditions regarding the reflection and transmission of waves and also studied the relation between the complex amplitudes of incident, transmitted and reflected waves and the real amplitudes of incident, reflected and transmitted waves.